I'm Rachel from Jimmy Beans Bowl, and today we're going to go over everything you need to know for Block 12 of the Cascade Yarns Knitterati Gradient Lock-In. So Block 12 has some really interesting and really unique stitches and techniques going on. Uh, the really cool part about this square is that it actually starts in the middle and then you work your way out following these increase lines out on the, in the four different directions. And of course you can see in the center of the square here there's not a hole either and there's a really unique uh, cast on that we're going to use to get those stitches, um, there's eight of them that you start with, and to get those stitches into a circle and then pull them tightly enough that you don't have a hole like you normally would if you did a regular cast on. So the first thing I'm going to show you is how to do that special cast on and then after I show that I will um, we'll move on to the uh, stitches that are used to create this uh, neat lacy pattern in the rest of the square. So let's start with the cast on. Okay, so what I've got here is I've just pulled out a little bit um, of working yarn. And what you're gonna need for this cast on and for the square is you're, um, you're gonna need a crochet hook for casting on. And you really want this crochet hook to either be the same size as your needle or smaller. In fact, I might even encourage smaller because when I was practicing this, I found that my stitches were really, really loose on the crochet hook, and then when you try to transfer them over to the double-pointed needle, um, they want to like slip right off of it, so the smaller crochet hook actually works a little bit better in this case. And then of course you need your set of double-pointed needles to um, knit the beginning of the square. You will eventually move to a circular needle, but um, you start with just eight stitches, so until you have enough stitches on the needles that you can um, move to a circular, you gotta have your double-pointed needles. So, okay, so let's start with this. Now they call this the circular cast on. And um, this is very similar to a circular crochet cast on. If you are a crocheter, you probably know what I'm talking about. And what you wanna do is, I found the easiest way is I take my two fingers and I drape the yarn over it with the tail hanging towards the front of the, uh, the two fingers. And then pull it over the top and around the back. And then, I grab the tail with my pinky and my ring finger, so leave it long enough that you can kind of grab it with those two fingers, wrap it around, and then make a, make a cross. Okay, so once you've got a nice cross right there, I kind of steady it with my thumb, and you can kind of hold on to it and pick up your crochet hook, and now you're ready to actually start forming the stitches. So this loose loop that you're making is eventually going to be pulled tight to, to pull the eight stitches that you're casting on into a ring. So that's what you're doing with this part right here. Okay, so this first stitch is going to be a little bit funky. You just kind of got to move that hook around and make it work for uh, whatever works for you. But keep holding that cross with your thumb and then come underneath the loop on your finger. My working yarn is off to the back over here. So come under the loop. And just to make sure you've got things crossed right, this strand here should be underneath your working yarn. So when you pull on that, it gets stopped by your working yarn that's um, in the cross. So you're gonna grab your working yarn, and you might have to do a little bit of like finger acrobatics here to hold it <laughs> while you pull it through like that. If you're a crocheter, this is probably way easier for you. Okay, so once you got that first loop onto your crochet hook, you're gonna do one more loop, and once again, those like finger acrobatics. You can kind of let go of your loop a little bit. Is once you get that first loop on the crochet hook, you can kind of steady it with your other hand a little bit. Okay, so grab this and pull it through. Okay, so once you do that, you've created your first stitch. You can see mine is like super, super loose, so this is where you wanna like try and tighten it up. Okay, so now from here on, you're kind of crocheting like normal, except that you're doing it underneath the loop. So what I found works for me is I grab the loop with this finger and hold it steady with the crochet hook, and then you go underneath the loop, grab the yarn, pull it through, and then grab that as well. So there's my second stitch. And you're gonna just let them back up on the crochet hook. So go under the loop, Grab your working yarn and pull it through, and then make one more loop that's going to get pulled through the one that is actually into this loop that you made. 
Okay, so there's three stitches. So let's do one more. Whoops. As you can see, I am not a crocheter, so this is definitely um, a little bit hard for me to manage, but if you've got any crochet uh, skills, then you're probably gonna do this super easily. All right, so we're halfway through here. Let me just pull that through. Now we've got one, two, three, oh, five stitches, okay. Whoops. There's six. There's seven. And there's eight. Now, if you have to play with this a bunch of times to get it figured out, um, you might see that your yarn starts splitting a little bit. It just kind of happens with this kind of yarn when you're when you're figuring out a new technique like this. So if that happens, I suggest just like playing with it until you figure out the technique and then cut that end off. So when I was playing with this to figure it out for the video, I really like mangled up the end of the yarn, but then I just cut that bit off and you only lose like, you know, a quarter of a yard or something while you're playing with it. Okay, so here's where you see if you have done this correctly. So you're gonna grab your tail, right? And then you pull. And in fact, I've got it looped around an extra time. Sometimes that'll happen while you're working with it. You really only need it looped through one time. But when you pull this, it's gonna pull your stitches together and it'll close up that loop. Now, of course, these are still on the crochet hook, so we need to get them over to a double pointed needle. Oops, don't roll away. So I'm gonna start by moving them all to one needle, which I know they need to be spread out amongst the four needles eventually, but I found it so much easier to move them to one needle first and then distribute them among the four. Okay, so we're done with the crochet hook. All stitches are on the double pointed needle. And then your working yarn is on this end. So I'm gonna start back on the other end and just move one, two stitches to that needle. And then two stitches to this needle. And here's the fun of double pointed needles. You gotta keep all of these arranged properly. Okie dokie. So you can pull this tight one more time. Let me see if I can hold this in a way. Or actually, I'm gonna put it on the table here. And then you can see. So you can see you've got a nice um, circle. And then this tail right here is the one that you pull tight. And that brings all your stitches together. And now you are ready to just join in the round like you normally would and go ahead and start working on the instructions for the project. So that is how you do the um, circular cast on for this square. And then um, I'm gonna move into the uh, stitches that are used to create the patterning in the next section. Okay, so the patterning in this square is actually just formed by six different stitches. It's pretty, pretty simple. Um, knits and pearls, of course, to, to do the main patterning on the right and the wrong side. And then there's three decreases and three increases. And that is how you get that really beautiful center out lacy pattern. So um, I'm gonna start with the decreases first. Let me just get past my little edge here. And then decreases, of course, are pretty, uh, pretty typical, pretty basic. You've got your first one which is uh, knit two together. So you just take your right needle and you insert it into the two stitches on your left needle and then knit them together. And then um, the, other, the other increase that is used throughout this pattern is called an SKP, which is a little bit different from your typical um, slip slip knit. So SKP, you actually, um, you slip one and then you knit one and then you pass the slip stitch over. And that's how you do the two um, main one stitch de decreases. Now there's one other type of decrease called an SK2P. This is a slip one, knit two together, and then pass the slip stitch over. So in order to do that, you're gonna slip one, then you, whoops, 
knit two together just like we did in that other stitch and then you pass that one that you slipped over the two and that's how you do the SK2P. Okay, so in addition to your typical decreases, you also have some increases. So let's start with the basic one, just your yarn over. You bring the yarn forward and then over the top of the right hand needle, then just knit your next stitch as usual and it makes a little hole. Then you also have what's called a make one and the description for it is insert needle from front to back under the strand between the last stitch worked and the next stitch on the left hand needle. I'm gonna actually show you the way that I do it because I, I find it's really hard to like manipulate my left hand needle. This is how you would do it. You take your left needle and you put it under like that and then you knit into the, backs, the back of that stitch. I'll just do that to show you. That's how the instructions have it written. I actually use my right needle to, let me knit one more. I use my right needle and I pick it up from front to back and then I just pop it right onto the left needle. For some reason, that motion is so much easier for me. But you feel free to do it whatever way it works for you. Okay, so for the last increase stitch, it's a make four. And the way you do that is you pick up the bar between the two stitches and you put it onto your left hand needle. And then you're going to knit, knit one into the front of it like normal, but then bring your working yarn forward and purl one and then bring your working yarn to the back again and knit one and then bring your working yarn forward again and purl one. So what you've done is you've increased four stitches into that bar and it creates a nice, um, nice big decorative hole as well. So that's probably why they're using it for this pattern. Let me knit one more stitch next to it so you can kind of see, see it makes that larger hole right there. Uh, so that's how you do the make four. Let me show you one more time because it is a little bit of a funky stitch. So you're going to pick up that bar and put it onto the left needle and then you knit one, bring your working yarn forward and purl one. You've increased two at that point and then working yarn to the back again and knit one and then working yarn to the front and purl one. Then of course you need to put your working yarn to the back again before you knit the next stitch. So there you go. You can see you've got this cool little decorative hole and then you've also done the four increases that you need for the pattern. So that is all the stitches that you need to know in order to complete block 12. Thanks so much for knitting along with me. Be sure to check back in three weeks for block 13 of the Cascade Yarns Knitterati Gradient Lapkin.